Hey guys, welcome back to Chrome's Down Under. Um, sorry about this video being late, but yesterday was um, Easter and I was uh, hanging out with my family all day, so I didn't have time to make a video. But uh, it's going to be a quick update today. Um, so, everything, all the corals doing really well. Um, but with this, uh, the Montipora here and this style for it, um, oh no, uh, Pusilipora, I knocked them off so they might be in a diff bit different, this one's in a different position, this one might be in a different angle. Um, but this, this digital chart up here, I've noticed it's starting to encrust quite a bit. It's almost at the edge of the plug there, which, um, I, I went back and looked at previous photos of it. And it wasn't near the end of the uh, plug yet, so that's um, pretty good. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, down here. I just, because um, I've, I've accidentally fragged stuff before, like I snapped. Uh, of this uh, Montepore here, I snapped that little piece on the rock there um, off. And it's still alive. It's just, it looks dead. Let's just see if I can get the colour on it. Yeah, you can see a bit of the colour. It just gets washed out from the light. Um, and this, uh, this hammer coral here, which actually has got a lot more, I think it's got a lot more purple on top recently. I don't know how it's got it, but I think it's somehow got a lot more purple on top. I cut that off, and I'll probably be cutting um, this head here off, and I'll be shipping this uh, chalice off as well. It'll be here next weekend. But um, maybe not the weekend after. Um, but I'll be getting rid of um, that as well. Um, as this, this. I don't know about these two hammerheads, but uh, most likely I'll be getting rid of them. Um, and uh, I got these rowers here. They're not fully open. They've been in the tank for a while now. Uh, probably about like three, three and a bit hours. But um, they look really good. They got like a pastel green um, like colour around the mouth and then it's got purple and then pink and then the uh, like frilly part on the outside is kind of like pastel purple it doesn't have much of a colour um, and th this blast I got from last week is doing really well uh, the, oh, I, I feel like this uh, coral here which I thought was uh, um, oh, I forgot what I thought it was called or Cyphastria I thought it was called a Cyphastria but it's a uh, um, Hydenophora, I think it is. I think that's what it's called. Um, and yeah, with this Montipora here, and this Digitata up here, the base, the like the colour of it, like this was really green before, it's losing some colour. Same as this one up here. Because um, the nitrates and phosphates are actually are really high. The nitrates are at 20. Um, the phosphates are between one point, oh, 0 0.25 and 0 0.5, which is really high. And I'm currently working to get those down at the moment. Um, and this is the other coral I got today. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a uh, branching parietes or a um, postulopora, but it looks really nice. It, on, the, on the video, you can't see the colour. Th these lenses that I got um, don't really show the true colour of lots of these corals, but it is like it's the, like a, um, a light aqua colour. I really like it. Um, and it was a really good price for it as well. It's a big chunky piece, like probably the size of my hand. Doesn't look like it, like near the tank, but you know, if I want like that, like fist size probably. But if I put my hand in the tank, you'd see. But um, from my, like this doesn't look like it, but it is. Uh, so yeah, talk about this frag here. So these frags, how I did it, I got a uh, scalpel. Um, and because so this is here, I, was, I really wanted to try frag uh, zoanthid. Um, so I was talking to Mez Fletcher, she frags a lot of zoanthids. And this is what the uh, chalice and the two heads are going over. Um, this, I'm shipping over to Melbourne to Mez Fletcher, um, where she'll be selling her, uh, reef stock in Sydney. Um, and she'll be at the uh, reef flexions booth, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, this, this zoanthid here, I wanted to give it a shot. So I've been talking to her, getting all the... Uh, like stuff I need to be able to do it. Um, I used washing up gloves and some safety goals and then a scalpel um, and then just cut, cut the around the heads that I wanted to take off. 
Um, and because that, that those heads I want to take off were grown onto the frag plug, I used some wire cutter um, wire cutters to crack the frag plug to get them off. And get a, yeah, they're still close up. I only fragged them like twenty minutes ago. Um, I got two different frags. One with two heads and one with four heads. Hopefully they do well. It's the first time ever fragging a went, so they might not do uh, very well. Um, and yeah, this going to pull up here. I, I could frag. I thought about it, but I was like, nah, it's not really worth fragging yet. It's just not big enough. I, I want it to actually get big enough and look nice, and I only have to frag when I like. I want to frag it, but I should probably only frag when I have to. Um, what else? Yeah, this is a bit about it for the tank. Um, Oh, also with these power heads here, the two on the wave maker. I don't know if the wave maker's faulty. I don't think it's the wave maker, but they've been um, they just stopped working, and they've taken it apart, take the impeller around, put all I have to do is put the impeller back in, and it works again, and then it'll start working again. I don't know what's up with it. Um, yeah, not not quite sure what's happening with those, but um, I'll stop the video. I'll come back and show what's in the sun. So we're back with the sump here, and the water level, I'll turn the ATO back on, but the water level, I drew a line here which is 25 centimetres, um, and that's because I was reading up on what the uh, um, water level should be on the bubble maga skimmer, um, because I, I had like down here before, so I had to write it up a bit, um, I did that, did that when I did a water change, I did like a 50 litre water change and put uh, that much water back in, but um, so I got that back up, and I can see I, I've got I've also moved the bubble line. Can't really see it, but it's like up with the label because Ms. Fletcher is the same one as me, and my phosphates are high, so I was trying to figure out how to get them down. So I'm, um, I asked asked her where she had hers at, so I'm trying um, having it there at the moment, and it's re um, working really well. I'll show you how much skim I've got in a second. Um, also. I don't actually know this, but, but detritus releases the nutrients into the water. So I've ordered a pump off eBay, because um, these ones here, you can't stick a tube over the end. This one I'm not too sure if you can, um, but I, I want another pump anyway to blow around in this section so I can put my dosing lines into here, because um, I've got them there. Um, but I'm pretty sure half of the, like most stuff here, dose gets pulled up by the skimmer. Um, but, so, I've got the pump, and um, I ordered it last night, I'm pretty sure. And so, I'll be vac I'll be sucking out all the dryers, and next week I'll be cleaning up the skimmer. It'll be full, full clean of everything next week. Um, and here, um, these two pumps are doing really well still. Don't even know how to say it, but, yeah. This, uh, the reactor, the arc is going to bit faster, not too much faster, but um, the pod, the amphipods there is like tons of amphipods and really, really big amphipods in there. And so this is the skimmer I've put out so far, and it's not, it's, I've been having it at least for like three or four days I've had the skimmer at this level, but it's not as much as you think it is, because this is just from when I was doing the water change today. I turned the pump off, I thought it would, um, when I was uh, dipping the corals, I thought the, um, Stump level because it was down here when I took the water out, so I turned the return pump off so it wasn't, didn't run dry, and it went all the way up to like here, so the skimmer was overflowing. So that's why this looks like more than it is. But it was probably around here, which is a, a lot. That's I, I, did, I probably didn't even get that for two weeks, how it was before, but now I got that um, in like three or four days, so it's really good. Um, and it's the same color as well. I've shined torch through it to check. Um, it's uh, same color. And up here and show you this uh, shelf. So I already had this shelf before, um, made with my dad when I was young. I had um, hanging above my head um, when I slept, like next to my bed, and I had um, all the books that um, I used to read in there. Um, so I've, I've, what I did is it used to be red because my room used to be red and green. I, I painted it white because uh, I didn't like the red and green. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I I got the shelf to turn it sideways. Um, it used to be like it used to be going across like that, but now it's going straight up. Um, and I put my dosing stuff in there. So the dosing pump here and um, here is where I'm, I'm dosing a vinegar and uh, brown sugar mix. 
I think it's 1.8 litres of vinegar to 200 grams of brown sugar. Um, and it's white vinegar. Uh, and I, I don't know if it binds the nitrates together or if it um, binds nitrous phosphates together or if it um, encourages the uh, nitrimonium bacteria to grow and that um, helps break down the uh, nitrate and phosphate. Um, but yeah, this shelf looks really nice. I got all my, um, well, I'm really liking it at the moment. I think it looks pretty good. I got all my stuff up here, like my glues and all my buffers. Like this alkalinity one and this KH Caroline grows empty. I just think it looks nice there. Um, and I, so I'm also um, feeding pellets at the moment because um, apparently they have less nutrients in than um, than frozen food. They have more nutrients, but for the amount you feed compared to frozen food, they have less nutrients because you have to feed more frozen food to fill the fish up because um, they don't have as much. Um, it's, it's not as good for the fish. We don't have as much nutrients in it for the fish to um, use. Um, I also made some fish food too, which was a bit disappointing when I got my, um, I, I made it one day, next day I get my nitrates phosphates tested by my local fish store because I still don't have a, um, a test kit um, for them. So when I went and got a test and it turns out that high, it's a bit disappointing so I couldn't use my new uh, fish food. But what I did, I got the Ocean Nutrition, um, I was filming this for a moment, you won't be able to see the colours on it properly. But I got Ocean Nutrition um, Master Shrimp, uh, Krill, Marine Mix, and Lobster Eggs. Because uh, I chose Lobster Eggs instead of Fish Eggs, because um, they didn't have any Fish Eggs there. But if you um, if you wanted to make this, and they do have Fish Eggs, um, I recommend getting them over Lobster Eggs. Um, then I got six um, big banana prawns um, from Coles, and just shelled them and um, blended it all together and then froze it. Um, and and uh, the reason for this um, is so you, uh, you can put it in the when you feed it um, you don't defrost it before you feed it because otherwise it would become like it would turn into cloudy water and you would be like broadcast feeding all your coals pretty much um, that's all you do you snap a piece off like you put it in snap lock bags and push it out so it's like a thin sheet snap a piece off and put it in the tank um, when it's still frozen, the fish will um, uh, eat when it's frozen, and then um, like all these little particles will come off and flow around the tank, and the corals can eat them and get food that way. Um, the corals don't need food, but it's always good to feed your coral. Um, and oh, I'll put the lens back on the camera and I'll show you something really interesting with the corals. Alright, so um, when this is the edge, the torch coral. Uh, it's with both of us happening with, right? specifically this one up here, the pinky brown one. Um, if you see there, um, it's still got one head, but um, instead of having one like fleshy cone, and then it has the tentacles coming off it, there's one cone that splits off into two cones, and then it has the tentacles coming off them. So it's um, splitting to make two heads. Um, so it'll be interesting, uh, get a second head on the torch coral. Um, happening with this one, it's a bit harder to show, see if I can, nah, you can't see it, it's happening with that one too, um, but it's happening faster with this one over here, uh, so it's something interesting that's happening with the torch corals, and also with this, this is also encrusting pretty well as well, uh, this bird's nest, uh, yeah, that, that's it, uh, the, so that'll be it for the video, um, a little quick update on what's happening um, and like what new corals I've got and all that um, but I'll see you next week where hopefully my nitrates have gone down and phosphates have gone down because um, I'll be getting a new li another light for this tank to add up there um, I've managed to find a really good price on a Hydra 26HD which I'll be getting in a month or so um, so I can put it up there and also be ordering a, uh, a J-Bow CP120. It's the, um, what it is, it's the, it's the new model of the CP40. Um, and what I'll probably end up doing is I'll put it here, and then I'll have this pump next to this pump pushing against it, because it's a really strong pump, the CP40. Um, and and hopefully, once I get my nutrients down and all that, I think we'll be ready for Acropora, because they're my favourite corals, and I just really want to get... Even just one acropora in here, but 
if I put it in here now, it'll get it'll just nuke itself and kill itself. Um, because well, it won't kill itself. It will just die because it's not the parameters aren't stable enough and the nutrients are too high. But this is it for this video, and I'll see you next week. Where I don't know what, what will be happening.